there are particular lenses that will show off your subject to the best. If, for example, you were to use a 16mm super wide angle lens on a portrait subject, it would not look very good at all. So what I want to do is I want to run through a series of comparison test shots for you going from super wide angle up to telephoto lenses, keeping our subject, our model's head, the same size in the picture for each shot and allowing you to see the differences of each of these focal lengths and what effect they have. So you understand why we use particular focal length choices for this type of photography. Now I can tell you straight off the bat that in the 35 millimeter format, we'd be looking at an 85 millimeter or a 100 millimeter up to about 135 millimeter focal length as the ideal standard for this type of photography. If we're working on medium format, we'd be looking somewhere around about 100 millimeter up to 150. Now the shot that I've got on screen already is shot on an 85 millimeter focal length lens and you can see the rendition of our subject is similar to how we would expect to see it with the human eye. And that's basically what we're trying to achieve, is something that's flattering for our subject, something that looks believable. But as we divert from that focal length to other more extremes, either wide angle or telephoto, the appearance of the features of our subject change quite dramatically. Now, this doesn't change if the camera and the lens and you and the subject distance remains the same because nothing really changes then. It's only when you change the camera position closer or further away, which is what you have to do if you change lens, if you want to keep the head the same size in the picture. What I thought I'd do uh, for this test, instead of Stephanie, let's bring in Ben, our video uh, editor, and we'll use him as the uh, guinea pig so that we can see on a real human the facial features changing with these different focal lengths. So, Stephanie, unfortunately, you're out for now. Let's go and get a real human. And uh, Ben, can we get you over, please? So we're going to get Ben, our video editor guy, into a uh, shot here. I'm just going to give you that tape, and then I'm going to get you to uh, put a mark for yourself. Let me just get you in position. Come forwards, please, mate. Okay, stop there. Right, let me just get this lined up on your eyes. So I've got to get the focus points to match each time. Go backwards one tiny bit, that's it. Okay, and let me get that there focused. Okay, put a mark there for me please, Ben, so that you stay there. And if you can avoid moving now for the entire test, so we are going to start off with the 16 millimeter super wide angle lens. And then we're gonna work back in focal lengths, probably uh, focal lengths, probably 16, 24, 35, 50 mil, 85 mil, and then 100, 135, all the way up to about 200 mil. And then we'll have this exact comparison. So just popping a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on which is super wide angle up to wide angle. Now, I have to go in really close now to get his head to fill the frame at the same ratio. So I'm going to, this is absolutely ridiculous what I'm doing now because you would never really do this, but if we want his head to be the same size, and I may even be casting a shadow on him there, but there you can see the extreme of how much distortion we get with the 16 mil compared to an 85. And you can see the huge amount of distortion from a 16 millimeter lens compared to an 85 millimeter lens. So you can see exactly why you would not want to use a 16 millimeter lens for portraiture. Now in saying that, I've sometimes used a 16 millimeter lens for full length fashion where I want a little bit of distortion and I want to stretch the body out a little bit or you've got a more wide angle shot. But for a close up portrait, you can see the huge distortion, how it exaggerates features that are closer so the nose becomes larger. The angle of the head would even affect the shot 
but I think you can clearly see the difference uh, how one looks like him and the other uh, doesn't look like him at all. Anyway, let's continue on. Um, I'm going to take focal length up to 24 millimeter now. Now it becomes a little bit more recognizable on this one, but still a considerable amount of distortion. So there you'd say, yes, that looks like him. I can see that is the guy. But if you compare it to the 85 millimeter, it's still a completely unflattering lens for portraiture. Let's move on to our next focal length now, to 35 millimeter. That's the 35 mil lens. So he will gradually become more and more lifelike, if you like, um, or more how he should look. Even there, look at the change, look at that. You can see there's a really good change there because his eyes are exactly the right spot. There's still a huge change, even with that slight adjustment there. We're now going to go up to a 50 millimeter focal length lens and a 50 millimeter focal length will start to become more believable, more realistic. The 50 millimeter focal length in 35 mil format was always the standard lens that you used to get uh, when you used to buy SLR cameras before the day of, days of digital. Uh, and 50 millimeter was the chosen focal length as the standard lens because 55 millimeter, around 55, somewhere around there, is fairly similar to the focal length of one eye. If you're looking through one of your eyes, it's about the same magnification. However, it's still not the most flattering lens for portrait work. Uh, you need to go a little bit longer than 50 mil up to about 80, 85. Right, let's get the 50 mil on him. This is just an excerpt from one of hundreds of classes at visualeducation.com. Get that focus, take the shot. So here we are with the 50 mil. You can see the change again. So I'm going to the 70 to 200 lens putting it at 70. Um, hopefully it'll allow me to focus at this distance. Get it on his eyes. Now we're going to go to 85 millimeter. So that's around about there. Now we're going to go to 100 millimeter. I have to move further back as the focal length increases. Now we're going to go to 135 millimeter. And what will happen here as we get uh, longer and longer with the focal length, he'll just start to look more chunky. Um, and that's the problem with longer focal lengths. They just tend to make people look heavier So that's 135. Now I'm going to go up to 200 millimeter. And you know what? Let's go up even more. I'm going to get an extender and we'll go up to 400 millimeter. Okay, so I'm now going to put the two times converter on to convert this. 70 to 200, which is at 200 at the moment. I'm going to convert it from uh, 200 into uh, 400 millimeter, just so we've got an extreme version. So this is now a 400 millimeter lens. It's too shaky for me to even hold this. So I'm just going to balance it on this tripod just to make sure. Um, I get it held fairly steady. It doesn't look to be a lot of difference between the 200 and 400, but if we go with the 200 and compare it to, say, the 85, you can see a difference between the uh, perspective and the sort of chunkiness appearance of the head as we increase that focal length. But you can see the main difference is obviously as we get into these wide angles. So you can see there clearly why we wouldn't choose to use 
a 16 millimeter lens for portraiture or a 24 millimeter or even a 35 millimeter. It's only as we start to get towards 50 millimeter and then upwards, there we go at 85 or 70 millimeter on that one and then 85 millimeter that we start to see uh, the perspective and uh, the facial features as we would expect. So there you can clearly understand lens choices and why we make those choices. In this graphic, you can see as we increase focal length, the angle of view is decreased. So with longer focal length lenses, we magnify the subject more. And in doing so, we actually reduce depth of field. Therefore, wide angle lenses have the appearance of a more naturally large depth of field, whereas long telephoto lenses have the appearance of a shallower depth of field. So if you choose to shoot wildlife or sports or any subject where you're at a great distance, then it's obvious that a longer focal length would be your most suitable choice. If you're shooting landscapes, then a wide-angle lens is likely to be your preferred focal length.